Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, just to inform you like I did, uh, Pastor Josh, our organist, just had a little uh, schedule confusion today. One thought the other had switched, and we're still working all that out, but everybody's okay. And that was my big worry, of course, that we have organists coming from further away and thought was worried somebody was hurt. So anyway, everybody's okay. Uh, and we will have one second service. So if you want to come back to see how this sounds with organ music. Actually, we were talking with the elders in the back just a minute ago that uh, once construction starts and we were essentially lose the balcony, right? Because they're gonna be taking the bell tower down and they'll be walling all that off. We'll, uh, we'll be losing all of that. So this is a little preview of construction worship uh, with, with piano. So, um, and God be blessing all of that, of course, as, as we do that. And uh, to update you on that, we're hoping that shortly after Easter, uh, we'll be able to, to get all of that construction started. And we've broken ground already, but they're waiting on some more paperwork and all that to get finished. And once that's done, they'll actually start construction. So um, today, here and see, um, you noticed in, in the readings, there was a, a consistent idea as you heard Pastor Josh reading about uh, blindness or being able to see and especially even also in the Old Testament reading there was a phrase in there uh, about hear and see. Proverb writes this, hear you deaf and look you blind that you may see. Okay, and as we read some of this from Isaiah we wonder who is God talking to, who is the prophet talking to, right? God speaking through the prophet Isaiah. The question is who is he calling deaf and blind. First, of course, is the audience that's there, his servant Israel. Okay, uh, He says as much in, in verse 19 here, who is blind but my servant? Or deaf is my messenger whom I send. This is not uh, good things to be saying about his servant, right? He's being critical here. Nobody's as blind as my servant. Nobody's <laughs> deaf as my messenger whom I send, right? Um, the one he is called, his chosen people Israel are, are, are blind and deaf. Look, he goes on. He sees many things, but does not observe them. His ears are open, but he does not hear. Right? And this is some kind of stuff we've heard, similar ideas in Scripture before. And I want to ask you today, as the prophet is speaking, as God's word, as we hear these things... What does he mean by blind and deaf, right? I mean, he, there's something going on because he sees many things but does not observe them. He, his ears are open, meaning he can hear, but doesn't hear, okay? I'm going to get to the idea a little bit today. C.S. Lewis writes this in the book, The Weight of Glory. This is, uh, I've shared this example before. It would seem that our Lord finds our desires not too strong, but our desires are too weak. We are half-hearted creatures, fooling about with drink and sex and ambition where infinite joy is offered us. Like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because he cannot imagine what is meant by a holiday at the sea. We are far too easily pleased. Do you understand what he's saying here? Right? We, we would seem or we would think that, right? It seems that our Lord finds our desires not too strong. In other words, we think that we want too much and the Lord wants to hold us back and we want the best of the best. And he says, no, we are too weak. We want to fool around with, he gives some examples. Maybe it's, alcohol or or maybe it's ambition and there was another example there which with children obviously we're not going to present these things but our the things of this world we are wrapped up in and we pursue all sorts of things and we pursue our own ends and he says that the desires and the things we have of this world are, are a slum that the things we desire and think are so great as, as we don't hear and as we don't see that the things of this world are are this okay or compared or they're slum compared to the rest of the world he says we're like that child who in this place wants to build a mud pie and holds that mud pie up as the greatest of greats when he offers so much more okay. 
that we're too easily satisfied, that the brokenness of the world we are enamored with, that the things of this broken world are the things that we pursue rather than the wonderful things God offers, right? That we see things, but we do not see what we miss, okay? So, so what does he mean by blind and deaf? Ears that don't hear. It is that you don't listen, that, that I don't listen. It's our eyes that don't see, that we don't see the problems in our lives, that we don't see the sin. We know what the Lord calls us to do and to not do, and yet we still do it. Scripture is full of stories of Israel, his servant, right? This is uh, getting back to that idea from earlier about the servant being his people, chosen people. The, the chosen ones that he has called fail to do what he desires them to do and continue to do what he does not want them to do. We have eyes that don't see and ears that don't hear. We continue to pursue the things of this world rather than what the Lord calls us to. And in our reading today in Isaiah, it says some, continues on with some interesting things. For a long time I have held my peace. I have kept still and restrained myself, the prophet says. God is saying, now I will cry out like a woman in labor. I will gasp and pant. I will lay waste mountains and hills and dry up their vegetation. I will turn the rivers into islands and dry up the pools and I will lead the blind in ways they do not know. It sounds, when I first read it, it sounds like judgment. This sounds very bad. I will lay waste mountains and hills. I will dry up all their vegetation. I will turn the rivers into islands and dry up the pools. That does not sound like a good thing. But he's describing what he's going to do for his people who are blind, for his people who are deaf, those who refuse to listen. And as you go on in the reading, it says this, and I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know, in paths that they have not known. I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. These are the things I do, and I do not forsake them. In our gospel reading, you saw Jesus not forsaking the blind man. On the Sabbath day, he was not supposed to be doing anything, any kind of work. He brought sight to his eyes. He did something that was uncalled, or, or, or uh, not uncalled for, it was perfectly called for, but he did something that was unheard of for that day. It was not supposed to be happening according to the laws of the day. But God says, I will lead the blind in a way they do not know. What is the way that you do not know? It is that greater way. What do we know? We know the slums. We know the ambition and the drink and the sex and other things that he gives as examples. But he says, I will lead the blind. And he takes us, and rather than those phrases, I will lay waste to mountains and hills and dry up their vegetation, we see that the Lord is clearing the path. Rather than leaving us as people who are blind and deaf, who are sinful and turning away from the blessings, who are satisfied with that mud pie rather than all of the promises God makes for us. He removes all the barriers. I will lay waste mountains and hills. I will dry up the vegetation. I will turn the rivers into islands and dry up the pools. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. God makes the path clear for us. Yes, we stumble and fall each and every day. But Jesus has come to live that life perfectly. Jesus is the one who lowers the mountains, who raises the paths, who dries everything up and makes our way straight and possible. It is Jesus who provides the way. And it is Jesus who leads us. And all we do is turn to him in that trust, repenting of our sins, understanding that we are blind and deaf, that we do not hear and we do not see and so as much as we confessed earlier and in that confession and absolution, Jesus says, I've got this, as he is the one who leads us, as the, as, as the prophet describes to us today. 
Yes, the world is a place that we struggle. Yes, as C.S. Lewis says, we are those ignorant children wanting to go on making mud pies in a slum. But we cling to Jesus, who takes us on his way, who leads us, that we may not be lost. May we continue to trust in all that our Lord and Savior does as he makes our paths straight and clear as he leads us to be to be by his side. In Jesus' name, amen.